Okay. Uh, so, for those of you who watch uh, all the videos I put out throughout the week, uh, you would know I was I've been talking a lot about uh, ML Kraus since he was announced, since we got information on him, and since we know a little bit about him. Uh, so, I actually, just wanted to make like a video today, uh, going over him, going over his skills, his stats, and all that kind of stuff, and and um, why I'm gonna pull for him, why I think maybe you should pull for him, and and you know, just give you some idea of like going into it. Um, as always, though, I think it's important, you know, I mean, presume, I mean, hopefully, and, and I think obviously most of you, or if you're subscribed here, you probably have subscribed to someone else uh, in, additionally, in addition to me um, that hopefully is, is higher level than me and, and, you know, is just at a better place than I am. So I would always defer to them first, but if you want like a second opinion that maybe, maybe you're on my channel, um, I don't know, maybe because, <laughs> I don't know, I have no idea why. Uh, but you know, maybe one reason is that I'm closer in level to whatever, wherever you're at. Um, so you can kind of see, uh, you know, what someone around, you know, other people around your level might think about this character. Uh, because you know, someone like Astronox, well, I think, I think we're all decently pretty close to Astronox. He's not so far off, but someone like, um, maybe Shuffles or, uh, or Warbolt, they're a lot higher. I mean, they, they consistently, you know, you know. Shogun, Shotgun Shogun, and all those people. Well, I mean, Shotgun Shogun's a little on the lower end, I think. Uh, he's not as like high as <laughs> I don't think he's as high as the money he puts into the game, but that's that's a different thing. Uh, but you know, you know what I mean. Like, there's a lot of people that are like at the high end that you know they, they'll say stuff, and and it's not that they're wrong. It's not that they're, you know, it's like oh you shouldn't believe them. It's just that a lot of uh, sometimes a lot of the stuff that they're talking about doesn't apply to everyone because they're so high above that like you have to be in whale territory. And if you're in well territory, I mean, you don't really have to look up these videos, right? You just kind of, you look at them for like formality, right? Just, just because, uh, you know, for entertainment purposes. Uh, but if you're looking at them for like educational standpoint, um, I think people are on this level. It, it's, it's, this is, this is the point where you start have to, having to make compromises, right? So when you're at, uh, war bolts or shuffles or someone else's level, um, you don't have to make compromises. It's like, is that character look pretty good? Yeah, sure. I'm going to summon it for him. Yeah. For us, it's like. All right, ML Crow is coming out. We really have to think about this because you know, picking Crow means I'm deny you're denying maybe the next two or three ML units uh, until you can get another pity. Where it's like you know, if you didn't have to make that compromise, you know, your choices are a lot easier. Is what well, is all I'm saying. Like when you have the ability to buy Mystic Packs, your choices become easier. Um, if you choose Crow, that's a that's a two or three or four month investment that you know is gone now. You know what I mean? It's like so. Or other people, you know, you just buy a pack and just like, oh, look, I need that character. I'll just pull them and there you're gone. And you have them. So uh, down at this level, there's a lot more discussion, a lot more care, and a lot more, like, thinking about what what you're doing and where you're going. Um, so, you know, maybe, maybe that's one reason you're here. But anyway, sorry, enough rambling about uh, other people and what they're doing and all that stuff. Uh, if we're here, we're here for, for what I'm going to talk about, and we're here for ML Crow. Uh, so one of the reasons I kind of put this off a little bit is, for one, I put a lot of stuff off, obviously. I'm not, like... <laughs> the best when it comes to anything other than guild war and like aether raid stuff or fire emblem um but also because i wanted to wait for him to actually be in the game and now he's not like i mean i guess he's in the game he's, he's right here you can see him uh but you can't summon for him yet um but yeah so we'll talk about him we'll take a look at him obviously his multipliers are on uh e7x you can go check that stuff out uh but his multipliers are only useful in as far as considering how much damage he's going to do so for this for this video i'm going to bring up the the damage cal the e7 damage calculator the math um, we'll look at that and we'll see what kind of damage he does and, and you know the exact multipliers aren't that big a deal we'll just see you know the end product and that will be fine um so a lot of people like to start from uh, s3 to s1 uh but i like to go you know one to one to one so one to two to three so let's, let's start with the s1 um the s1 is, is is pretty good it's actually um it's actually great for him um one of the things that some people have been mentioning maybe is running him on Elbrus. It, and it's not like been a real, um, well, it's not been like a real discussion on it. It's just sort of something that gets brought up here and there. Um, but I don't think it's really worth it because if you Elbrus more than once, you're getting the speed buff and you're over, you're just getting another speed buff on top. They don't like stack or anything, right? It's just like overlapping. So it's like, just let him get that speed buff naturally. Like, don't don't like. Oh, I need it. I need it every single turn. I need it to be on him constantly, forever. Um, just you know, have him do his uh, S three, and then you know, when his turn comes around, S one again, and then go from there. Um, that's kind of the way I see it. I think uh, running Elbrus on him is too 
um, it's too wasteful. Like there's so many other units that, that benefit so much more from S winning. Like even you know yeah, just anybody really. Uh, and then if you're running Elbrus, you really kind of it pressures you into having this max Molod. And then on top of that, you kind of want his S1 to do some kind of damage, right? There's no CC on it either. So, you know, normally like if you're running CC and she runs Elbrus, well, she can, she can S1 and then CC somebody by taunting them. And he can't really do that. He's just kind of hitting into thin air for no real reason. Because uh, as we'll see later, you can't really build crit. And the da so the damage and everything coming off of this isn't really valuable in my opinion. So, yeah, like I said... it. it Sort of talking too much about a, a small throwaway line we've, we've seen here and there. I mean, some people just be like, oh, I mean, maybe Elbrus or something. You know, if they mention it like that, I mean, obviously that's not that really worth going into. But uh, I just wanted to, like, hopefully I can make that a little clear. Like, I really don't think that uh, Elbrus is the way to go on him. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Um, like I said, this this the fact that he gains speed from this is just perfect. It's, it's actually pretty amazing. Um, so his S2... It's pretty good. Uh, in this case, I guess we'll go to the S3 now, just to, just because uh, the S2 works with the S3, so we, we want to know what the S3 does before the S2 feeds into it. Um, so this is this is it right here. This is uh, for any of you. I've actually mentioned this in some video in one of the a few, maybe one or two videos before, where I mentioned just jokingly that uh, I can't wait for ML Crow to come out and like his horse is just uh, he, like he's just exactly the same, only his horse now uh, AOEs. Um, and obviously he's a little different. His 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 kit's a little different, but uh, basically he's just a he's just a knight still, and he's very tanky. And <laughs> here we go, his his horse S three is now, <laughs> which is uh, insane. Um, so we'll go to the calculator in a little bit. We'll talk about it first, uh, just from like here. I, I've already seen the numbers, and I'm sure maybe many of you have already seen the numbers. I'm not like you know I'm not super early on this. So now that we've all seen the numbers, and we'll, we'll go into them just to have more like concrete numbers to talk about. But well, now we've seen the numbers, um, we can say pretty clearly this is not exactly going to be a Crow S3. Uh, and we'll talk about that, like I said, the exact like difference in how much number, how many dam, how much exact damage points they'll do back and forth and all that stuff. But looking at it from a basic level, we've got a seven turn cooldown, six turn with Molagora, AOE defense penetrating attack. Um, the the average or the probably the main damage numbers you're gonna see off of an S3 uh, turn one to open is usually gonna be around five thousand. I mean that's that's kind of like what we're all sort of coming to realize about five thousand damage on an S3. Um, so I mean for two for one you get you know you get that five thousand you know as an opener which is pretty cool right where Crow the problem with Crow and we'll get to him. Um, the problem with Crow is you can't open with his S3, which it's not the biggest deal because you usually want to open with his S2 anyway. So it's not, you know, like I said, it's not that big a deal. Um, but on top of that, he gives you immunity, which is, he gives you and your team immunity, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not much else to say there. It's pretty cool. Uh, immunity is a very good buff to get on your, uh, your tank. Uh, who else has that? Like CC has that, uh, regular CC. Um, and not a whole lot of the, other tanks, so that that's that's pretty good. Unfortunately, you still get counter, countered by um, regular Basar. So, but all else, you know, put everything else to one side. You know, he's good, right? Especially because you want him to be fast. So, other people who have unbuffable that are in the meta right now are uh, SSB, right? Uh, chances are you're gonna have a faster crowd than an SSB, which means that as long as they don't have Basar, you just you're gonna get your immunity up and you'll be fine. Um, yeah. Uh, so let's take a look. So we got that. That's two things. Uh, for for three, like like we said, it penetrates defense and it doesn't critical hit, which means you can just wipe the floor with Ken's by just constantly hitting him with this. He can't heal from this anymore. Uh, it's 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 insane, right? Um, and then of course it, it increases based on your max health, uh, and then damage increases on how many time every time you do it, right? Uh, so like I said, we'll, we'll look at numbers and we'll see what that stuff's about. Uh, but Right off the bat, before I even saw the numbers, I already knew that this was like, uh, like Ken, ML Ken is already like getting dunked on in the meta these days. But like ML ML Crow is not helping that out at all, like whatsoever. Um, so yeah, you know, just rip Ken, I guess. Hopefully nobody, uh, I don't know. Hopefully nobody traded a, an ML for him or something like that. Because oh my gosh. Um, but anyway, so skill cooldown, his, uh, his soul burn effect is only 10 souls, which is actually a little bit. If those of you who have seen some of my videos or, or for those of you who have seen videos in general or even used MLCC, you know that the one soul burn, the 10 soul burn, uh, S3 that she has 
it's pretty good at like you know it's, yeah like i said it's not much to say it's pretty good it's like very relatively little souls for such a powerful like uh cooldown reduction is is, is very good uh and especially on him more than anyone else because for one you're not only i mean people are just looking at the damage but what this means is that you're keeping your immunity buff up as common as, as much as much as possible is what the point there is um, as well as you're increasing the damage um, by hitting multiple times, right? So this cool, this go cooldown. I mean, it it's it's I I I consider it to be very valuable. Uh, and then of course, you know, you want to increase. I mean, this is going to be the first thing you're going to max. I I think anyway. Um, you really want this damage to be as as top as possible, right? Uh, so then then we move on to his S2, which is like if if it was just this and this, I think I mean I mean he wouldn't be you know as strong as he is now. I I think he'd still be very good. I think he'd still be really worth considering pulling, but I mean this is just this is just pushing it over the top. I think so. After he gets an AOE, uh, he gets everybody a barrier, and we'll, again we'll go look at those numbers. Um, I think the the multiplier on this barrier is ten percent of his HP once you fully mullet it. Uh, so that's not too bad. Um, yeah, it's not too bad. It's what if you get like twenty five thousand HP, you've got a twenty five thousand or two thousand. 500 barrier uh every turn they aoe so if you're finding ssb with him and like uh rowana it's like it's over and i think they showcased uh those two together which i mean that's the kind of the point right um but yeah so you know this is ridiculous uh but not only that it decreases the capture skill cooldown by one turn uh where is it here okay so this is what i want to point out here the barrier effect only happens once per turn but not the skill cooldown reduction so every aoe you're taking will reduce the cooldown of this which means it'll be up faster combined with the fact that he'll be stealing a lot of turns because you'll be theoretically you're going to make him as fast as possible um like he's going to be very scary to deal with like you, you're not going to be able to ignore him and if you hit him then you're wasting time because you know you're hitting one of the more valuable targets that might be there which is going to be like one of your damage dealers or something like that so you really have to focus him um otherwise he's just going to keep giving barriers he's going to keep giving uh immunity he's going to keep hitting you with the horse s3 like it's it's no joke um yeah so this is what's this is what makes i think pushes this over the top not not necessarily the barrier the barrier is fine um unfortunately the barrier means that you're not going to run him with uh mlcc because that's kind of dumb um which i think is kind of sad but you know whatever uh just that like the fact that every every time your aoe hit you're hit with an aoe it has to be full aoe not like a vildred cleave like s1 or something like that it has to be full aoe uh, but every time you get hit with an aoe you reduce the cooldown by one so you know if you hit like if you're taking if you're fighting against an ssb they open with the s3 or you open with your s3 first right so this is on a six turn cooldown they hit you with S, uh, ssb's s3 that's already uh, four turn, uh, five turn. And then she hits you with the S2. That's already four turns. He takes his own turn. And he's back to three turns. And he has a speed buff now, which will be even faster. And then, you know, that's not including if SSB hits you with another one. So he can basically uh, hit his S3 one every, or another, every other third turn or something like that. Something kind of theoretically maybe, depending, and depending on how you fight. If you're playing on, in regular arena, you can take him into stuff that you know you're going to get AOE a lot. And then uh, obviously RTA is going to be a little different. They're going to, you know, it's obviously a person they're gonna to want to you know not facilitate uh crowd so much uh but he's something he's someone that i think uh you really need to be careful of um when taking aoe uh so let's see what, what else was there uh so he gets the self imprint of health which is amazing uh gives someone else crit chance which it's not like it's kind of whatever um but yeah i think uh you're really gonna to want to go with this and we'll talk about like what how you kind of want to build him and you know what what kind of stats you want um, but yeah, so this this S three is good. We'll we'll go. Let's go take a look at um, real quick what kind of numbers we're looking at with this. Uh, here we are. Hold on, let me put that away. Okay, so here we are. Uh, let's let's uh, let's refresh the page so that we start off uh, brand new here. I, I actually love this dark mode thing. It's it's awesome. Uh, so let's go find Crow. Okay. Ah. So this is why. I, so this is. I want to point these things out here, and this is where a lot of the like, what makes crowd this crowd so good, um, is gonna is gonna come up here. So most of your most of your tanks, if you go right now to your epic seven and you look at a bunch of your tanks, a lot of them will hover around fifteen hundred HP. Like that's or uh, fifteen hundred attack, right? So let's kind of. Well, I won't bring it up, but you know, 
let, let's put what an average damage deal, uh, an average tank's um, attack stat is. So around 1500 HP, or attack. Um, da -da -da. None of this stuff matters here. So let's put let's put a reasonable amount of HP on Kral here. 25,000 HP. Okay. So as an opener, you're hitting for about 47. That's kind of low, right? So let's go see what we can do here. Okay. So the reason I put that up to 2,000 is to show you that we actually get 400 attack from that 500 attack boost, right? Let's go here. Right, so that gave us seven from an 1,000 attack boost. Now, I'm not saying to go that far, but I think like since Crow, since ML Crow gets so much from that attack, like 500 right there gave you 400, which is, I think it's pretty good. And that puts him over to 5,000. Now, of course, 5,000 isn't such a big deal. You just like, you can just heal that off and it's not even really like worth it. But I want to point out a few things here. For one, Tempest Surin is sort of a plague that's coming across RTA and um, regular arena. And she hovers around 11 to 5,000 HP, right? You can't one shot her anyway. So for one, you're already doing on turn one, the maximum amount of damage her passive allows you to do to her. And you're gonna get that skill cooldown reduction when she has, when she AOEs, which she'll, she might AOE uh, pretty often depending on how fast she is. Um, and you'll hit her again with another one, and that's not that's only counter. That's only considering if you're doing a one v four with Crow and that, right? You have to. It's important to think about the other units in your team as well, right? So, just Crow himself is already. I'm not gonna say he counters Tempest Surin, but the fact that like he's already gonna S three as an opener. And he hits her for as much as she uh, as much as she's allowed to be hit for. That's that's a bonus considering you know where we are in the meta right now. Like I said, um, this is also isn't considering the fact that like if anyone runs a damage dealer on their defense team now, they're basically dead, right? Because most damage dealers aren't anywhere over ten to eleven thousand HP again, right? So you're half hitting all of them, and that's not considering the damage you're doing on tanks. Of course, it's not going to be that much on tanks. You're not going to one shot tanks. But you're you're really stomping on a lot of people's damage dealers, so it's making putting damage dealers very hard on defense now, which is already a bad thing, which is already not something you want unless it's um, ML Violet. Uh, now Riolu there usually hangs around 10 to 11k HP as well. Unfortunately, the miss chance on on him is a little uh, iffy, so that's something you want to consider going in. But again, like you're half hitting him if you hit him. If you don't hit him. Of course, you're going to be doing uh, considerably less damage. You're doing 4,000, which is not that bad. It's not that good. Uh, but so, th but this is all considering him as an opener. The thing that I want to stress here is that because his damage scales, the more times he uses this, and theoretically he'll use this a lot, you know, a decent amount of times. It also becomes an execute. So anyone, so let's take a look at what happens when we're full stacks, right? So we're at 8,000 damage on his S3. What that means is. After a few turns into the game, anyone under 8,000 HP that gets caught, you know, slipping under 8,000 HP is going to die from an S3, right? So you have to consider, I mean, a lot of people are just looking at him as just him, right? I'm just going to, you know, what's Crow going to do by himself? But you're running a whole team behind him. If you're running, like, you know, a bunch of other tanky units like an Alencia, Alencia can hit, you know, um, you know, anybody for about 5k. And that's already down, they're already down, you know... Like if they've got 15k HP or something like that, they're already down to 10k, and then you're hitting them for another 8,000 8, on top of that. Or just Alencia in general is hurting people quite a bit. So I think that's a, that's what I want to point out here is Crow. This this Crow is so good not only because for one it's consistent damage every so often you're just gonna you know bring the horse down the, the robotic horse I guess the mo uh, motorcycle, right? Uh, it's consistent damage, which means that Ruel isn't going to be able to out heal him because she has single target healing where he has AOE healing. Uh, and again, you're bringing something else with you, maybe like a, a Spectre Tenebria or something like that. Um, on defense also, I want to point out, that's pretty interesting, right? Because on defense, you can run like a, maybe a Crow, uh, an ML Crow and then Tenebria, and you can't, AO well, you can AOE technically, right? But you don't want to AOE because um, Crow is going to get reduced and he's a huge threat. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's, that's, that's something else for, you know, we'll talk about that later. But anyway, he, he's doing consistent damage, opening damage, 
Yeah, he's opening with damage, doing consistent damage throughout the match, and eventually he becomes an execute. So anyone under 8,000 HP is going to die. And you can just take that time to... Like, not only are you executing one unit under 8,000 HP if you find one, you're also hitting everybody else for another 8,000 HP. Um, and this is the other thing I want to point out here. The We now know the shield gets you up to 26k. Uh, I thought it was 10%. I guess it's a little more than that. But yeah, so 26,000... 26, 2600 HP, which you get on uh, the shield if you AoE him, which is excellent. Uh, it's almost like a pseudo heal. Um, but yeah, so there, so there's that. That's just what I want to point out. Now, if we want to kind of pretend like, you know, we're in fantasy land here, we can kind of like start messing around with some numbers. So, you know, if you're running an attack buffer on him, he's going to be doing 9000 HP. What I think, and I think maybe it might be, and I think this might be pretty viable. Um, it might not be too crazy, depending on how people's gear is, at the, you know, these days. Um, but I really think that maybe running him on a rage set, if you can get a rage set on him, run him with like over 200 speed, like 220, I think 250, but that might be like, you need speed set to hit that. Um, yeah, 250 speed or 220 if you can't afford it on rage set, uh, with, you know, like I, like I mentioned down here, 25,000 HP. And if you can get that on a rage set, you're doing considerably more damage. You're doing about what? Let's see, eight thousand. You're doing about sixteen hundred more damage to people, uh, consistently, mind you. Uh, that's if they have, of course, debuffs. And like I said, you want to kind of take other people in there with you uh, to take care of that stuff. Uh, Dizzy might be a pretty good uh, example for that, or, or just just any, or just someone with debuffs on you. Uh, but I think this, the fact that you can get so much more damage off of this uh, rage set off of him, I think it's a it's a very good way to go. Um, the, again, in theory, uh, you know, is it worth giving up the speed for the rage set proc? I mean, probably not. Like I said, you probably, I think, is my gear there? No, we'll, we'll look at my gear. And uh, he has the same stats as regular Crow. So for those of you who have Crow right now, you can start, you know, swapping gear on and off of him to see what your uh, ML Crow will look like when once you get him or, you know, when, once he's there. Um, some people might consider running something like a uh, portrait. That does, a, that does a decent amount of damage, but uh, I don't think it's worth, um, you know, he's got, there, there's so many good knight artifacts that you don't really want to run that, I, I don't think, anyway. Um, but yeah, so I think Crow is going to be very good, like I said, for, you know, for one, for, you know, like, great opener, you know, 5k damage is not nothing. I mean, it's sometimes it's, it's not a whole lot, uh, a lot of times it's not going to be a whole lot, uh, but it's certainly not nothing, right? Um, and these stats are very easy to get, so let's go take a look at, we'll go look at my crowd and we'll see what, what, what's going on with him. Uh, what else did I want to look at? There might have been a few things, I think, on the E7X. Um, but basically, we, we've seen everything we need from here, right? So we know he does, you know, 5k to open, 8k to, 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 ex to close or execute, like I said. Uh, so let's come back over here, back to the uh, actual game. Um, so yeah, let's go look at my crowd. Uh, my crowd's not. I mean, he's all right. I don't think he's 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 fast enough, but uh, he's 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 right where he is, uh, for what crowd does anyway. Okay, so this is my crowd. These are his stats. So as you can see here, actually, let's go back and take a look at some of these things here. <laughs> don't don't look at that level seventy five gear. Um, so let's go look at some of our tanks here. Some some of my tanks, I guess. Uh, that's a bad example. She's not fully geared. Um, Lilius, about 16. So she's about 16. I, you know, if you wanted to, you could probably get her up to maybe about 2,000. Not be too bad. Uh, who else? So my Crow, right? Again, he has the the most similar stats. He's already at 17. Uh, if you really wanted to, I mean, you know, obviously when you look at tanks, you really want to like move away from attack. But now with ML Crow, you might like find a piece of gear that's pretty good and be like, oh well. Let's put that on him. See if uh, you know. See if you know he, because he can benefit from that attack stat. Uh, let's go look at some other tanks. Do I have any other tanks? Uh, he doesn't really count. Uh, she doesn't really count the same way either. Yeah, I don't have a lot of tanks. I guess. <laughs> the, uh, I mean, the main two tanks I use, I use are going to be Fallen CC, Lilius, and Crow. <laughs> That's about it. Uh, so Fallen CC again. So fifteen hundred is a pretty good number. Uh, for your estimates and for everyone's estimates for how much attack he's going to have. Um, but yeah, so again, let's go back to Crow here. Um, like I said, the idea is, you, may, you know, theoretically getting him up to 2,000 attack 
looks pretty good. Like getting some attack in there is not gonna is not gonna hurt you. Um, so I can get him a little. Let's see if we can get him a little faster. Uh, I don't think I have anything better. So you can see here. Let, let's take a look at my gear. I'll show you my gear because it's always good to see this. This is the sword I have. Probably one of the highest health swords. Uh, not not the highest health sword. I have other swords that have more health, but like the abyss sword is one of the better rolls. It's got good health, good attack, good speed. Um, and the crit chance, of course, you don't want it on ML Crow, but like he'll like this would be pretty good on ML Crow uh, for now until you get something better. Uh, let's look at my helmet. So there you go. So this this is a good example, right? So this if let's pretend this is my ML Crow, right? Of course, like I mentioned, you want 220 to 250 speed because you really want them fast to open and 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 take as many steal as many turns as possible, basically. Uh, but you can see here my my speed is very much lacking, uh, and of course this health is kind of lacking. Uh, that's because I don't have like a lot of reforged stuff on him, and not not my best pieces as well as well as like running this on him, like the 75 gear. Um, but yeah, like if you're running all 90 gear, I do like looking at him at my crown now with better speed rolls. I think the the 2k, you know. However much defense you want to run on him, it's up to you entirely. Like just, just you know, you gotta you gotta feel it out. How where does he take too much damage? Where does he not take it? You know, whatever that stuff is. Um, twenty five thousand HP and like two twenty to two fifty speed. So we'll show you where my gear is at right now. So here you can obviously see this crit chance could be like anything else. I could get more speed off of this, but all my speed stuff, all my stuff has low speed because I don't roll very well. I don't roll very well on any of this. Uh, but it had good HP and all this stuff, right? Like, you can imagine, like, a way better piece than this. You know, get five more speed on this and get, like, a tw like a decent helmet with speed on it is, like, 12 speed right here. Get five more, you get 12 speed. Uh, you know, maybe this crit chance wasn't here and, like, you know, the stats was allocated differently. This right here is already, you know, five more speed on my two, 207, right? Uh, look at Let's look at this one here. Uh, this could be, like, another set. And, and on Crow, so... My Crow has this. Uh, obviously, he doesn't have enough effect resistance, but that's because I don't use him on... Well, actually, I do use him on defense, but I'm not on Guild War defense. Oh, no, yeah, I do. Okay, never mind. Um, but anyway, you want... Obviously, you want more effectiveness on regular Crow, but, let, let, you know, it's important to stick to, to ML Crow. On ML Crow, I think that maybe running uh, immunity set would be really good. So let's kind of take a look at, like, the only immunity chess piece I have that's worth anything. Look at this piece here. So I got 31 HP, 9 defense, 8 speed, and again, like all this crit stats, like they're useless on ML Crow. Um, they could be like anything else. They could be more health, flat health. They could be, you know, flat defense, flat attack. I mean, you can't get attack on a, on a chess piece. Uh, but they could be like literally anything else, right? You can just like sack all his crit chance, and I think that's the way to go. Um, and then I got to find like another immunity set piece that I don't, I don't have that many that would, be, that would be good for Crow. Maybe like this one here. Again, like effectiveness isn't really worth anything on him. Uh, that I guess something like that. Let's go over here. Where is my? Do I have any good speed? I don't. Have, uh, funnily enough, I don't actually have uh, very many like rank built speed uh, health rings. Let's take a look. See, like all of these that I have that have been invested into are the uh, stupid uh, automaton tower rings. So that's kind of a, that's a bit of an embarrassment. But uh, let's consider. Let's take this one. Yeah, that's fine. So here we go. So th so this is. Let's take a look at my gear. This is what I am able to achieve if I got Crow like tomorrow. Uh, oh, actually, his boot. So this boot I think is pretty good, right? 25, 19, flat, and then the crit chance. But I have an even better one. Let's go take a look at that one. Uh, boots I have uh, pretty good luck with. So look, let's put this one on. So 36k or 36% HP, 15 defense, flat health, and flat defense. Like just basically anything and everything that uh, ML Crow would want. Oh, just uh, let's go back here. Okay, so now this is kind of like if I were to get crowd tomorrow, this is what I would be. This is probably what I would put on him. You know, maybe I'd have to go find like a better helmet because this helmet looks like crap. Um, but yeah, so this is what my crowd would be. So look at that. Look at how well that turned out. We've got fifteen, almost sixteen k uh, defense, which of course you know can be padded out by like you know if I had if this was refinable, right? Or you know if I had better gear, better investments in terms of like you know actual refinable gear, reforgeable gear. Oh, but there you go, like 2,000 attack, there we go, we got that. 15k, uh, 1,500 defense, 1,600 might be a little bit better. Um, and then, you know, you've got basically the 25k HP. Again, I can't reforge this, uh, I can't reforge any of this stuff. I mean, this is already maxed again, but like, you know, you, there you go. Uh, and of course, this helmet kind of sucks, right? So, you know, if I were to reforge this helmet today for, for whatever reason, 
um, then there we go. I would hit the uh, the 25,000 HP. Uh, my speed is low because again, let's take a look here. Look at that. That's kind of medium to low lower end of the medium range. So maybe like a 13, 15 HP, uh, 15 speed sword. Uh, you know, you add what we add. Like, let's add five. Let's add five to all my speed on all these pieces because mine are very middling, kind of lower end of the middling range. So we add five to this. That's uh, what 14 speed. That's already 220 speed, and we're done, right? If I had rolled a better sword, instead of maybe getting this roll into crit chance, it rolled into speed, and we're already done at 220. But then we consider here, let's add another 5 here. Say it's 12, that's pretty average. Uh, another 5 there, we're at 225. I think we could get another 5 here, right? Instead of Again, instead of this crit chance, another 5 here. We're at 230 now. Uh, this one's a little harder because of how, <laughs> how high it already is, but uh, let's move on. Another 5 here, right? We're at 235, right? And then you get here. We'll pretend we get another 5 here. 240, right? That's 240 speed with my gear. Now imagine if one of these pieces was... Uh, uh, I rolled 20 speed on it, right? That's that's 250. We're done. So you can see how ridiculous Krau can get on someone who has decent gear. I don't, I don't have a single piece that's over 20 speed. Um, is kind of one of the problems I'm facing. Um, and a lot of my stuff doesn't roll very well in speed. But all these stats are very attainable for people at like, you know, slightly higher end. Um, like, like I said, if your gear is even slightly better than mine, you could, achieve, you could achieve like, you know, the quote unquote, the dream crowd, right? 250 speed, 25k HP, just hitting people with the S3 constantly for free, essentially. Um, so I think this is very valuable. I think, uh, again, I'll probably run him on something like this. Hopefully I can find a better helmet and a better ring and, and we'll be solid. Um, but yeah, like what's so great about him, right, is for one, you don't have to run effectiveness because there's nothing on effectiveness on, so that's one stat you don't have to worry about. No crit chance, no crit damage. That's already three whole stats you don't have to give a crap about. Um, effect resistance, of course. My effect resistance is like abysmal. Um, but that's not that big a deal, right? You can you can kind of like mitigate that by the fact that you're running a, a immunity set and uh, he gives himself immunity, right? So that's something to consider. Um, but again, because you're you're you've got so little stats to worry about, effect resistance should be something that you're that you're considering. Uh, so maybe like if you find like this piece here, let's see if we can instead of this attack. So maybe I can drop all this attack, go down to 15k, and still do you know what I was taught, still decent damage, uh, and put and just dump all that in effect resistance. Maybe hit like 100 100 effect resistance or something like that if you get enough you know if you get enough off of these. But I personally don't value effect resistance as much, uh, unfortunately, right? Uh, because I have like like you know like you guys have seen my my Ruel. I have like 150 effect resistance Ruel, 150 effect resistance uh, A Momo, and they still get CC'd like all the time, right? Um, so yeah, like I like I said, I don't value it too much, and this would be kind of my dream crowd. Is all these stats here, you know, 2K, maybe 16, uh, 1600, 25K, and two, like 250. I, for me, it's achievable probably like two, uh, 220, right? That's kind of what like is within my range right now. Uh, but of course, like I said, if your gear is even slightly better than mine, you could probably easily hit a 220 speed uh, Krau. And, and that'll kind of happen more over time, right? Like, so that now that you have Krau, you'll sit there and you'll like think about like, oh, oh, look, a, a good piece for Krau. So now that Krau will be in your in the forefront of your mind, you'll, uh, you'll get a lot more pieces uh, for him. And this isn't even adding like, so this is what I have now. I can sacrifice some HP, right? Uh, by giving him imprints because his imprint gives him uh, health and I don't have any imprints on, on my crowd. But, you know, there you go. That's another thing kind of going for uh, ML crowd as well is that you can just like, you can even, I mean, I, I would, I'm probably going to drop a shard on him. Uh, one of the, no, the, the, the unknown slates. There we go. Uh, I'm going to probably drop an unknown slate on him to, uh, to get like this first 6% because that's usually where you want to be. Um, and yeah, and he's, he'll be pretty good. Let's, let's take a look at some of his, uh, his artifacts here. Uh, this one's probably not that good. This one looks kind of interesting to me. Uh, just because, like, I imagine killing him the first time is already going to be a huge pain in the ass. But then, like, you know, he just comes back with 25%. I don't, I don't remember what the barrier is. Is the barrier the other, like, another 25%? So he's at basically 50% HP. Something like that, right? Um, but, yeah, I mean, you know. Holy sacrifice might be an interesting uh, an interesting thing on him. Um, what else do we have here? You know, something like uh, this. So if they AOE him, not only is he giving everybody a shield and reducing his cooldown, he's also getting boosted forward. 
Uh, if you want to be like, you know, and, that, and this I think would be good for Arena where you know what you're going into, where it's like, oh, I'm going to fight an SSB with Crowl, even though there's not a whole lot of SSBs running around these days. But I'm going to go fight an SSB with my ML Crowl. Um, then, you know, just take all the AoEs and just keep boosting yourself forward. But if you're playing RTA, obviously they're going to be a lot more cautious around what they do. Then maybe running a Hill Axe Lance would be pretty good, right? Because then they'll attack other people. If they attack other people, you're going to be boosting your Crowl up pretty hard. Um, do I think maybe an Aureus? I mean, you probably could run an Aureus, maybe reduce the uh, the level of it so you're not doing so much. Uh, so you're not taking so much damage. But um, let's go look at the journal because I don't actually have them all, a lot of them unequipped. I have a decent amount of them, but they're not all unequipped. Uh, again, like I said, Albrus, I don't think is the way to go. Uh, maybe running Justice for All would be pretty good because you, you know there's a chance to get like a defense barrier, a defense barrier because he doesn't have the defense barrier, uh, the defense buff anymore. Um, the critical hit chance isn't so good. Immunity isn't so good. Barrier isn't so good. Continuous heal would be pretty good. Crit resistance is, is nice, uh, and speed isn't. So about basically half of the buffs you're getting aren't useful off of this anymore because of Crow has them already. Uh, so I, I wouldn't really suggest it. Uh, this is for boss fighting bosses, I think. Uh, Bastion of Perlusia, I think is fine, but again, you don't really want to be overlapping your barriers like that. Um, so yeah. Uh, Rise of the Monarch is another fine one, but again, uh, the barrier overlap. You just take an AoE and you're going to get a a bigger barrier. Any oh, that's a decent... Oh, actually, this one's, this one's probably going to be bigger. Um, his barrier, I think it's like 10 to 12%, something like that. Um, but this barrier is going to be 16%, so that's a whole lot. Um, but yeah, so there's that. Let's go here. Uh, increase the defense by 16%. Uh, so this, is, this one's a pretty good one, I think. Um, yeah, because you, redu you remove souls every time they hit you with an AoE. So you just incentivize further incentivizing not AoEing him because then you're running out of souls as well. Um, so then there's that, and then of course there's all this stuff down here. You can run like Adam and Shield. There's always, it's always a good, solid, safe choice on a Krowl. Um, if you want to be like kind of insane about it, I guess, like if you really want to be super into, I mean, you know, running this on him might be pretty good. Making sure he, he stays, um, alive longer, like just making him as unkillable as possible so that they have to deal with him. Uh, they have to spend a lot to deal with him and, and your other characters are kind of safer. Uh, what else? Like I said, uh, Portrait of Saviors, like we looked at the numbers, it's not that high to get, you know, this much damage out of it. Uh, but... But yeah, I mean, it's all right. Uh, if you really value that opening damage and then like the continuous just AoEing. Uh, what, what's another one that I was thinking about here? Like maybe this, right? Every time they hit him, they're reducing the, the, the cooldown. Uh, well, not every time, right? There's a chance that it'll happen. But there you go. There's another uh, interesting artifact. Um, would I recommend it? Probably not. I think maybe like the Hillags is probably what I'm going to go for or something like that. Um, this one looks uh, really fun to use. Just like making, not only is he giving himself, not only are you theoretically trying to hit 220, 250 speed with your Crowl, but you're also giving him this that gives him, uh, what is that, 20% speed after 10 turns, uh, which is what? Ten, well, after, after five turns, which is pretty decent, uh, you're getting 10% speed. Which off a of 250 crowd, that's 25 whole speed you're getting from that. So your your speed becomes 275. Um, and then that's not even including the fact that you've got the uh, that's that's 275, right? If after 10 turns he's at 300 speed, but that's not considering the fact that he also has a speed buff on his S1, which is 30% of his speed on top of that. Which you know we're getting into speed numbers that shouldn't even be possible, um, to some degree anyway. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, this one might be really fun, really meme build, kind of, you know, just, just stacking speed for no reason, just through the roof. Uh, but yeah, that's about that's about it mainly. Uh, there are not a whole lot of other things to use. Uh, but I do think maybe just kind of sticking with like the fact that he's a knight would be really good. This one, again, is going to be probably going to be decent on him. But uh, I think what would be good pairing for him, uh, let's go back here. Oh, I think we went all the way out to the lobby, which is pretty irritating. Uh, I think uh, ML Tywin might be good pairing for ML Crow, because uh, like you put them both on a defense team, and it's like someone tries to uh, what's his name Basar you, and then ML Tywin just cleanses the debuff, and there you go. He cleanses the debuff. ML Crow gives you the shield, and you're solid. You're like no one should be taking a Basar into that because that's dumb. Like no, just don't do that, please ever. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, there you go. That's a huge deterrent to one of the more irritating units in the game that can actually stop crowd because the unbuffable is so annoying. Um, so pairing them two together would be, I think, would be really potent on your arena defense. Um, yeah, so I mean, eventually I might replace my defense with that. Um, with him, I'll put him. I might put him on arena defense, especially because like, not only are they taking the um, AOE damage from the from the, the 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 arena itself, like the turns that pass, the the burn damage or whatever, but they're also taking damage from the. Um, they're also taking damage from Crow constantly hitting them with the AOE, and then they have to like kill them each individually one at a time. So what I think my uh, my defense might look like would be like. I don't know, maybe you regular Crow because he gives them a defense buff. ML Crow, like ML Tywin, and then maybe uh, the Ruel here. And that sounds like it'd be very difficult to fight against, I think, anyway. Um, Crow making everybody basically unkillable. If you lower him too much without paying attention, he's going to S3 somebody. Uh, Tywin, of course, you can make him, you know, fast, decently tanky, uh, and, and pretty hard hitter with the defense uh debuff or something like that with the defense debuff um and the um what else yeah the defense debuff and all that and then of course ruel's never going to not be irritating on defense um but yeah i mean like there's there's definitely a lot of possibilities i think the i think a solid core would be uh the tywin the ml tywin the ml crow and the ruel and then this third position can be your flex or the fourth position can be your flex position so maybe something like a um like i don't have riolu but riolu would be pretty good I also don't have ML Tywin, so that's another thing to consider. Um, but the the Riolu might be pretty good. Um, Alencia might be pretty good for stripping buffs, so that uh, ML Tywin ha is most potent. Uh, I don't know what else. Yeah, I mean just anything. Like, like I said, this core up here of Tywin, ML Tywin, uh, ML ML Tywin, ML Tywin, ML Crow, and then uh, Ruel. Watch out for it. I think we're gonna see it a decent amount in the. Um, the top arena defenses as soon as people get their hands on it uh you might even want to go tankier and just put the um like the the fat cat right here and give everybody a bunch of evasion for no real reason um but yeah i mean as i said like there's or hell even put the the general pergus make uh aoeing well actually that's four lights i don't know if that's such a good thing um but yeah yeah probably a dark would be best maybe maybe actually run specter chenibia there right because they're not going to want to AOE to get this or, you know, her or anything like that. And she can revive as well as, like, you know, just all kinds of nonsense happening. So, yeah, I mean, there's lots of possibilities. Um, yeah, just, like I said. Or even if you want to be, like, super stally, just infinite stall forever. Maybe, like, a Rowana... Uh, what's her name? Rowana in this fourth position. Yeah, just put Rowana here and maybe, like, that might help out. Uh, but, yeah, so, like I said, that's the defense. Uh, the one of the last things I want to point out is uh, Crow's usefulness, ML Crow's usefulness on um, in Guild Wars. So I, I, as a lot of the, let's see if we can go take a look here. Let's go take a look at our, our own teammates' uh, guild um, setup and all that stuff, our, our unit setup and such. Um, so as you notice in my Guild War videos, a lot of times I'm pointing out uh, where Crow would be useful and where you know. What might be pretty good for him, but there's a lot of defenses out here right now where Crow would be insanely good because he just comes in S threes and S threes over and over again, and they don't have a healer, so there's not enough consistent healing to keep them alive through all of his S threes. So you know you S three like three times and they're dead, right? If, they, if you're doing five k and someone's running like I mean for one Arbiter Vildred, so if you're fighting Arbiter Vildred, you're doing five k. That's half his health bar, and then you have other units that, that'll hit him too. Maybe you're running Alencia or something like that. Uh, that's tanky and does some damage. So that's 5k, and then when it comes his turn again, he does another 5k, and he's dead. You know, Charles is there, so he's like halfway. He's two-thirds dead. Um, Cecilia is, you know, a decent amount. I don't know, you know, she's usually about 3k, 30,000 or, you know, 28, 25. Uh, so she's taking damage. Um, but yeah, so like, th there's a lot of things to consider when you're running Crow. is like... The fact that he has consistent damage to a lot of like defense teams is is a very good thing. Um, so let's go take a look at some like some defenses that might be weak to it from our own team here. Um, so this team might be see this team right here down here is very good for ML Crow. You could just like horse them, and they're all you know they all take you know a third maybe of their health. Um, maybe not her. She's she's usually around twenty k something like that. 
Oh, that's a fourth, right? And her again, that's a, that's a third. Uh, well, it's actually a third because then hers gets transferred to hers. So you basically third hit everybody with one crow opener. And then maybe you run, you bring, um, I, I don't know, maybe Spectre Tenebria. And then she, she can't be hit, so you're just baiting everybody else. Again, the same thing here. You're not going to do a whole lot of damage against these two because they have huge health bars. But you're just whittling them down anyway. You'll, you'll get another one and another one and another one. And they don't have any healing. You just bring crow and a healer and you could probably, you know, two shot or, you know, beat a lot of teams with only two units so that third unit becomes your flex and you can just put whatever you want on there to do that little extra damage just to finish it slightly faster rather than you know yeah uh of course the only problem is you know riolu is never not going to be annoying um so there's that but i think the fact that you're the 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 horse still does so much damage even on a miss to a uh riolu here especially because you have elemental advantage um Actually, let's go take a look at that number real quick. Uh, let's see. Let's turn off the. Let's turn off this one. Okay. Let's go take a look at this number here. So we've got about on turn on turn one, we're hitting about for four thousand on a on a miss. But where is elemental advantage? Okay. okay. So you're hitting Riolu for about four k, right? So that team doesn't even survive that long because that's already a third of his health bar gone. And they don't have a healer, so you just and that leaves you four more attacks before he S threes before his S two procs the S three again, right? Um, which you know that just leaves you down to like eight thousand HP that you have to figure out how to, some way to to take to remove from him. Uh, so like, yeah, like I said, I think that uh, ML Crow is going to be really good for just a lot of the teams that are in meta these days. Because a lot of people are trying to run like decent damage dealy teams because um, you have to have some damage on your team so you don't die. Uh, so you can do some damage to them because you can't stall them out here like you can in the arena because the lightning doesn't do anything. But here's another example, right? You can just like, well, actually not not this one here because they have healing and uh, this crowd you don't want to like hit him unprovokedly. Um, but yeah, so like this one here, you can hit this Ken constantly with ML crowd and not worry about it because you're not gonna crit him ever. So he's a he's basically a non-factor, and these two you just kind of have to whittle them down. So there you go, like that's a good example. Of where crowd would just be free. I mean, this team is already kind of free. Uh, like you just bring um, <laughs> SSB here. But anyway, that's besides the point. Like, there's a lot of places where crowd would be useful. Let's go look here if I can. Again, here's one. Here's a good example. Bring crowd with like a uh, uh, what's her name? Ah, with a uh, Ruel or something, or just a, a healer that can tank. Uh, Riolu, of course, you know, like I said, if you can't take a Riolu, it's usually just because you're getting out geared. Um, if you're if you're if you're building very tanky, I mean, like I said, uh, but there you go. This is a good example, or even this one down here is actually a pretty good example because no one here is going to heal. Maybe Crowd's going to hit somebody with his S three at some point, but like, you just got to manage your HP bar. So if he's running like 24, 25 k HP, he's going to hit someone for twelve k. Just make sure you're bringing three units who can consistently stay over the 12k. They won't die. And these two will just kind of be dead in general as a, as a matter of like how uh, time goes on in the match. Um, again, here's a good example. Uh, uh, actually, well, this one's kind of like iffy. Maybe crowd. May, yeah, maybe ML crowd with the uh, with your Ruel or your uh, CC or, or just somebody. And then your third person can be like uh, an A. Coley or um, Spectre Tenebria. And, and again, like this team down here is pretty easy to hit with ML crowd. Uh, did I already? Oh, this is, I think it just came from here, didn't I? Uh, no, I did not. Uh, so this is another example. You just kind of like beat into them constantly, especially because she only heals one person, her and someone else. Um, and you know they'll, they'll, she'll revive them, but by the time she like, like you you might. One of the good things about fighting against uh, Maid Chloe's now with ML Crow is you'll open and not do so much damage, which doesn't matter because. They have the revive buff, so you don't want to kill them right off the bat anyway. Of course, a lot so a lot of these teams are kind of just cleavable, so there's there's that to consider. But like, I don't have a, I don't have a decent cleave team or a cleave unit in general. Uh, so this is why I like Kraus so much is that I don't have to like now now I don't have to spend every day grinding for speed trying to you know max out my uh, my ML lots to like max out my you know cleaver and then just like stomp on everybody in that way. Now I can just run Kraus here. I'm not going to one shot any of them, so the revive buff stays up. By the time the revive buff goes away, Kraus should be able to S3 them again in, in order and just kill them. 
And then if she revives them, the S3 will be doing so much damage that they, the little HP they come back with, she, he's just going to execute them. Uh, and then it just leaves you um, her to deal with. Uh, again, like this team down here, I'll it'll take some testing. I'll probably show some tests uh, with him. Uh, maybe. But yeah, so like I said, there'll be some interesting teams. Let's go look at my team, see uh, if you can ML crawl my team. Uh, so like my Tenebria has about 9,000 HP. So on turn one, she's already been half hit and like she, she'll have to waste one of her heals on her. Um, she'll have to waste one of her heals on her and Crow, you know, does whatever Crow does. But I think maybe you might be able to bring it in here. Uh, here, again, like here is a pretty good example for what you could bring ML Crow into. Just like half hit him, uh, do some de decent damage against them. And just kind of write it out, because like every time he AOE, he AOEs or he AOEs or she AOEs, right? Because they all got AOE. Uh, no one here has AOE, so you probably yeah again you probably wouldn't want to bring him here, but you know it's up to you. Um, but here they all AOE, so you're going to be getting your skill cooldown reduced, and that shield's going to be put up for you. Uh, so I think in general it's all like there's a lot of I don't know I value his strength in Guild War a lot because AOEing them for true damage with that S3. Because they don't have healers so much on de on uh, on defense is going to be really good for like getting executes and stuff. Now let's get let's just kind of finish off. Um, I'll, I'll finish off this video by by talking about uh, the rotation he's in. So as always, the the new ML fives are going to be here for three weeks, uh, three rotations. Uh, this down here. Um, I'm not going to make a video on him right away. I, I'm going to pull for him. I think hopefully. But I'm not going to make a video for him right away. Uh, for one, I don't really care too much about this rotation. There's no one here I need. I mean, my F Maya's maxed. I don't have Dark Corvus. He's he's right here, and I you know he's right here, and I don't want him. So you know, don't really care about Corvus. Uh, I have t I have both silks already max imprinted. I could I mean I could use more of this, but I don't use Lilius as it is. And then uh, there's Ray, which I have ML I have ML Basar, who basically fulfills the same job he does. So I you know I can go without him. Um, and of course I can use more and more Angelica imprints for my Singelica, but there isn't a, a, I'm not going to like pull on this banner for that. It does kind of suck that we also have to like get C Mercedes cause I think most of us all have not only like as soon as you get C Mercedes, you can max imprint her using the, uh, shards or whatever they gave you to imprint regular Mercedes. So it, it is kind of a slap in the face that she's here, but I mean, you know, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so I think. If you want, I mean, basically, if you want Ray, go ahead and summon on the first week. But I don't think I will. Um, on top of the fact that I think I like, I'm I'm not sure what ML unit they, that could be after him that I would want because the next one after him is going to be a rerun of, of a unit. Um, the way like Car Corvus is, I don't know if Corvus has ever been here before, but like it's one of the older units, so it's a new unit and an older unit. So next week, next next three after the three weeks, he's here. The next unit in that rotation is going to be. Uh, an older ML unit. And I don't think there's any ML unit out there currently that exists that I think I would value over the Last Rider Crow right now, especially because I already have quite a few of the ones I need or want anyway. Um, so yeah, like I think I'm going to pull for Crow. I just, you know, it's always good to wait. There's never a reason not to wait. Um, but I'm going to wait till either week two or week three, uh, depending on what rotations are. Fortunately, this week we're getting um, the, so this, this week we're getting this rotation on uh, Wednesday or whatever. Uh, or Thursday, I don't remember. Uh, one of those days we're getting this rotation, so then we'll be able to see the next one, and we'll we'll see, you know, make a decision there. Uh, but yeah, so that's that's what I think. Uh, just you know, hang on to hang on to your you know hang on to your mystics. Don't don't be like summon on day one because on top of not only on top of just like being good practice for yourself, uh, it's also something you want to consider for like other people. So like let other people use the unit, and and if the unit's disappointing, take into consideration what they're saying. Like if don't, I'm not saying just like suddenly believe everybody who's saying ML Kraus sucks um, the same way they did with like ML Tywin or like, you know, so many other ML units. Uh, so don't immediately just believe that stuff. Uh, but do do to, do take it into consideration because right now, um, yeah, because it's always, it's always like easy to get caught up in the flow and be like, oh, I'm going to summon ML Kraus. I gave it to me. Arbiter Vildred was basically like, you're guaranteed to like, oh, I need to summon Arbiter Vildred. And even him, I was like, ah, whatever. I didn't really summon for him. Um, Immediately, I, I waited a little bit. Um, so yeah, like you know, like I said, 
keep in mind uh, all this stuff. I don't have a pity, so I am about 2,000 Mystic Metal short of guaranteed. Hopefully I get them. I don't waste 8,000 Mystics for nothing. Um, but I think the fact that I got uh, ML Vildred last time pretty early on uh, doesn't bode well for, for what's going to happen here. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. But uh, yeah, so just hopefully uh, some stuff was interesting that I, I mentioned here. I guess uh, as a last thing, I want to point out uh, like the visuals here. Um, I really do like the the way he looks. Uh, I like the sort of like '80s techno kind of stuff, and he kind of fits in that a little bit. It's a little more new age, a little more. Um, he kind of reminds me of Adam Jensen from uh, Deus Ex. Uh, he just doesn't have the uh, like sunglasses surgically <laughs> added onto his eyes, and he's not saying uh, he didn't ask for this every thirty seconds, so that's cool. Um, but yeah, I think uh, he's a combination of, of of him and Genos from uh, One Punch Man. So I think visually he's already pretty cool. Uh, he's not as like edgy as like uh, ML Violet or ML Vildred. Uh, even though I think ML Violet probably is the captain of like edge, uh, just because he's all in black and he's got a tattoo and he's just he's just really edgy. He's got the edgy squinty eyes. Where Vildred is like he smiles. You know he's kind of crazy. There's you know there's darkness around him, but he's got the white suit and you know he's a little more classy about the edge. Uh, but you know ML Crow's not so edgy. He just looks pretty cool. Um, I like that he he reminds me of Genos. I think. Like, the fact that this collar is here and these, like, flowing things would have made it better if he had, like, a jacket on. Like, if this, like, body stuff, like, was under and he had, like, a jacket on top of that and you could see, like, his chest poking through or something like that. I think that would make it, make it better instead of just having, like, these weird, like, jacket, like, things kind of, like, st like stuck to his body for no reason. Because right now it just looks kind of like a dress. It's, like, just coming out of nowhere. It's part of, like... The skin suit he has on and then like these collar you know what's up with these collars but yeah, i feel like a jacket on would be a lot cooler i think they went a little too far with like oh he's mechanized or whatever so they like mechanically added the the jacket thing to him um uh, but as it is it just looks kind of silly i think uh yeah like i said if he was like a robot dude with a jacket that'd be awesome um if he had like a uh be like a sort of techno like he's supposed to be like an agent right last rider crow uh no i guess he's supposed I, I thought it was supposed to be like an agent kind of thing, like a double, I think they said double O crow or some shist. Um, so like, you know, sort of maybe have like a jacket, like a private investigator or something like a old noir kind of thing, uh, but have it be like revamped in techno. So that'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah, anyway, like I just sort of, at this point, I'm just talking about the, the aesthetics and like, and whatnot. Uh, usually I'm, I'm more of a, uh, I play this game more for waifus than I do for, um, for husbandos myself. But uh, I'm glad that like crow looks pretty cool, right? He doesn't look like, I don't know. He doesn't look. Actually, I mean, probably a lot of the guys in this game look pretty cool. Like, like you know, Kron looks pretty cool. I think looks all right. He looks a little more husbando than than maybe uh, for my taste. Um, but yeah, like I said. So you know, at this point, I'm just kind of talking about uh, his aesthetics and what he looks like. Uh, I guess we can see his animations. I mean, if you're looking at this video, you've probably seen already a bunch of them. Uh, and, uh, it annoys me that it's always on auto when you get in here because it's like, ugh. I want to see the S1 first, right? You want to save like the S3 for last. But yeah, so of course the S1. Uh, yeah, I mean, look at him. He looks pretty cool. His, his model is pretty cool. He kind of reminds me of um, Cloud now for some reason. Well, not for some reason. I think it's kind of obvious. But uh, yeah, now he's reminding me of, of Cloud, which is pretty irritating because I really dislike Cloud. Cloud, but uh, you know, it is what it is. All systems on. Um, but yeah, so like this, uh, this S3 is pretty good. Um, I like it. Uh, I'm still like the happiest person in the world <laughs> that um, what I said came true. Like all the memes I kept making about how uh, ML Crow is just going to have this is going to be the same as regular Crow, but with like an AOE for an S3. Um, oh, that, I guess that's the last thing. Comparing him to Crow, so a lot of people are already kind of disappointed and going to be disappointed going forward that like he doesn't do as much damage as Crow. Um, but I think that's kind of the, the wrong way of looking at it. So how many of you, when you're using Crow, use him like at like zero HP or, or try to get him down to zero HP, right? To try to get like this massive, you know, huge Crow horse on them. And I don't think, I, I want to say many of us don't. Um, I personally don't use him for that. Like I'll use him to sit there. Like when I'm, when, if I'm going to hit a, uh, an ML Violet, like I'm going to just kind of execute him. It's like, oh, he's about halfway and I'm about, you know, I've maybe lost 8,000 HP or something like that. I'm just going to hit him with it, see if he dies. And if he dies, he dies, right? So a lot of times when you use Crow, you're never like going to hit him. You're never going to use people. You're never going to hit people at like zero HP. So you get like a 24,000, 
you know, hit on them. You use them to execute. So if you're fighting like an ML Ken, you're like, oh, that ML Ken's about halfway. I'm down to about halfway. I think I think now's a good time to execute him. Um, and Crow really does that, you know, better. I think to in a lot of degree, in a lot of cases, for a lot of you know, a lot of engagements. Uh, especially not not to mention the fact that um, ML Crow, you can like I said, you can do that. So let's consider this: you can do his S3 to open for 5k damage, uh, and then by the time you would normally Crow S3 before with regular crow ml crow already has his s3 up before or at the same time to do another s3 and then he can go further right so that's something to consider i think um yeah i don't know i think just looking at i mean that's the kind of the way i look at it is like if you're using crow to execute a lot of times like that's probably the, the same moment where you probably would have already had like two stacks on your ML crowd and and he can do a similar job of executing. Of course, he's limited up to like eight thousand as we saw those numbers. He's limited up to like eight thousand on that. Like anyone under eight thousand, he can kill. But um, you know, where the other one again is, is like you can you can you can push it to ten thousand, maybe push it to twelve or fifteen uh, on regular crowd. Uh, but even then, like you're usually trying to overkill something with that because. Like when was the last time you used an NML crowd to like hit uh, like a Rowana or something like that, right? I mean, sometimes you can execute like if you're down to five thousand HP on your crowd, sometimes you can use that to execute um, what's her name's Ruels, right? Uh, but at that at that point, a lot of times they're like they've got the Aureus or something going on or like a barrier, and you know sometimes you miss the kill even with you know like a twenty thousand H uh, HP uh, crowd uh, HP uh, S three hit. Because uh, it'll transfer like 20% over, so you're you're only hitting her for 18k, and she's got like 19k or something like that, and she like S3s herself the next turn, something like that, right? Um, so something to consider is that while the single shot potential isn't as good as ML as regular Crow to execute an enemy, the fact that you've got such a like high pressure unit constantly threatening um, the enemy team with as well as like the 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 utility he brings with the shield. Um, I think, you know, I think is I think it's a pretty good um, a good trade off for like, you know, losing one shot damage for general like AOE just you know, you know huge AOE damage as well as um, a decent execute regardless right so that's something to consider uh, for all of you out there. Uh, hopefully this video was somewhat informative. I think um, I'd like to be able to make videos kind of showcasing them and all that stuff, but. Um, It'll be kind of hard if like I have to wait till the third rotation because it's like then I have to pull at the beginning of that rotation like at the beginning of the week and then finish him by before the end of the week so you guys have you know something to see. But I think um, the pressure kind of alleviates for me quite a bit because there's gonna be a lot of people just pulling on him on day one and building him and all that stuff. So uh, fortunately, you guys can all see all that stuff and then you know make your own decision based on what I've said, what what they've said beforehand, and then once uh, ML Crow is out, what they've said you know be afterwards and all that stuff. So. Again, you know, just just make informed decisions. You know, keep uh, the mystic medals are, are, are a rare, a rare, uh, uh, what's the word, a rare currency. So just just keep that in mind. Um, you know, spend them wisely, unless you know you're a whale, in which case, you know, just take whatever you want, I guess. Uh, but yeah, so that, that'll be it for today. That's you know all my thoughts on ML Crow currently. Um, but yeah, so I, I look forward to seeing how well he performs. Uh, I look forward to summoning him. I do think I'm going to summon for him regardless of what, like, the general, like, YouTube sphere might have to say. Um, but, yeah, so, you know, there you go. Uh, I guess good luck out there. And I think, well, it, and this is kind of like a, a later thing, I guess, for, like, the future. But I think as gear starts to increase, right, I mean, I don't think we're going to see, I mean, I think we, we might be seeing things like, you know, in the future maybe... 3000 HP uh, ML crowds or something like that. Maybe, you know, I'm talking like once we get like 95 gear, you know, right? Like maybe 100 level 100 gear or something like that. Uh, maybe seeing a 3000 attack crowd or a 3000 HP crowd isn't such a big, big thing. So you'll begin to scale more because like you won't do, you'll do the same amount of damage to tanky people, right? Because their, their, their HP bars and their defense and all that stuff and their survivability will increase too. But I don't think, I think you'll still see a lot of damage to like squishier more damage oriented units right because those units will be stacking more def more attack because they have to get over that um like all the hp that people are getting right so when we went from 90 to, to when we went from 85 to 90 gear 
Um, we got we saw some bumps in HP and stuff like that, but like take Vildreds. Vildreds have always been around nine to ten k HP, and they're right there now. Now they just have slightly more attack and they do more damage. So I think going into ninety five or like a hundred gear, maybe like a year or two from now, um, Crow's value will increase because. A damage dealer's attack and damage stats will go up, but their survivability necessarily won't. And the fact that Crow, his survivability stats will go up, which means that also his damage stat will go up, means that he, he'll be a lot more potent against a lot of the damage dealing threats out there. Um, he'll do more damage to them specifically, where he'll, be, he'll do about the same damage to um, tankier units. Uh, so, yeah, I think... Um, he has some longevity, and and I think you know maybe right now, even if he's even slightly underwhelming right now, which I don't think he is underwhelming at all. Um, if he is now, I think going into the future, like like you know, E seven likes to say this a lot. They've got a ten year plan. So if we're going into the future, you know, two three maybe one or two years from now, um, I think he's going to be very useful, very valuable. Uh, he's going to scale very well going into that. Um, so yeah, I mean that that that'll be it for today. Um, hopefully, like I said. I already tried to end this video twice, I guess, but uh, hopefully you could extrapolate something from here. Um, hopefully the discussion for Krau uh, continues and, and we get to see further what, what's going on with him and whatnot. So, yeah, uh, that's it for today.